Today we're visiting with Southeast Fisheries District Supervisor BJ Kratz. I'm Mike Anderson with the North Dakota Game and Fish Department. BJ, we went into the winter very dry. How are your lakes in the southeast looking? Right, as you mentioned, we did go down, you know, 18 to 30 inches on the average for most of my lakes. Uh, so far, obviously, we've fared the winter pretty well, even though we did have a fair amount of snow. Um, only three or four lakes, really, that are, you know, questionable right now out of, you know, 128 or so that we had last year for, for fisheries, so. So with all the snow on the landscape, is that going to help the lakes? It should. You know, it's kind of questionable right now how much runoff we're actually going to have just because we, you know, as you mentioned, did go into the winter pretty dry. So a lot of those potholes and, and secondary places need some water first. And then, of course, the, the water that runs into the, the reservoirs and lakes, there'll, there'll be some, but we don't know how much. So we could expect a little bounce. So. Okay. Let's move into what everybody wants to know, your fish populations. Let's start out with walleye first. Yep, well, walleye, we're in great shape. Never have been better, actually, in the Southeast District as far as opportunities, uh, number of fish in general, and, and also places to catch those fish. Um, some of the better fisheries in the Southeast District are, you know, the Mallard Marsh, Barnes Lake Complex have been good. Uh, Craft Slough has a good population of walleyes in it. They're kind of tough to catch at times, but uh, they're there. We've got a lot of new lakes that we've started. Uh, primitive type accesses that we've been working on, so a lot of opportunity. And with those primitive type access, you rely a lot on wildlife clubs and, and other We do. We've actually, in, in this day and age, it's been difficult to have partnerships because they're, they're kind of becoming rarer. And so we've worked with the ones we could to try to develop, you know, nothing fancy, but at least a place where an angler can get a boat in and not get stuck and maybe not have so much mud on their feet when they're done loading and unloading, so. Okay, let's move into the state fish, Northern Pike. Northern Pike, we're in good shape, you know, 2019, uh, 2018, 2019, we had a lot of good reproduction, natural reproduction, and some of the better places to, to catch pike, uh, as I mentioned in other uh, webcasts, have been Pipestem Reservoir, crazy numbers of pike in there right now. Uh, Flood Lake, another down by column, is a great uh, population of, of pike in there. They, they should be, you know, five pounds, six to, five to seven pound averages this year. Uh, auction was good all year, so. Okay, let's move into panfish. And usually I start out with perch, but in your case, let's start with crappies. Crappie, yep, and I always, people probably get tired of, of me uh, driving home James Sound Reservoir, but that really is the place to be. We've got a tremendous number of, of crappie in there, and you know, they're 10 to 12 inches in size, and they're usually fairly cooperative with anglers, so um, that really is the best place. Ashtabula, as I've mentioned before, has the opportunity to produce some larger fish. You know, if, if anglers are looking for fewer but more quality, that would be a potential option. Let's talk perch, BJ. Uh, typically early spring, you guys trap and transport perch from Hobart Lake System to other lakes around the right. district. Yeah, the Hobart Lake System complex there has been the mainstay of, of perch trap and transport throughout you know, many years for the Southeast District, but uh, you know, winter time is usually the time that people pursue perch, and the, the better fisheries this last winter have been, you know, like North Eccleson, um, Shock Lake was really uh, good at times. Uh, Troutman had put out some nice perch. Uh, you know, quantity-wise, you have Moon Lake, which always is a good place to go have some action. Uh, Middle Eccleson is another one that has lots of perch in it, and some you know, good good quality size ones there too. Okay, any other fish species, BJ? Well, we've got the bass and bluegill, um, you know, smallmouth bass. People, Most people know that Spiritwood Lake and Ashtabula are the mainstay for that. We have, uh, you know, if you like largemouth and bluegill, Brewer Lake is a good place. Clawson Springs is another good place. Um, so, Dead Coal Creek. Okay, any major projects or any other projects going on this summer in your district? We don't have a lot right now other than we have got a kind of a perch study we're doing. We actually, the problem with the Hobart system is, is that at least the South Hobart Lake is, is that we have very slow growth rates for perch. Uh, they suppress each other when they get to be overpopulated. And so when we started last year, we actually removed a few and put them in a lake that didn't have any existing perch in there. So uh, we'll go back in on this year and measure their growth and then compare them again with, with the perch in, in Hobart and just compare and contrast growth rates in a new lake versus an old lake full of perch and just to document uh, some of the growth that perch can actually put on. Let's 
talk about a lake you would send an angler to, especially like shore fishing. Where, where would be a good place to send an angler? Well, I have to, I'd have to send them to pipe stem, simply because, you know, lots of action there and you have immense amounts of shoreline to fish. Uh, good access, it's basically all public. There's no, no private land per se on, on the majority of the pipe stem reservoir and it's, you know, shale, gravel, sand, it's not so bad to, to walk around in. You know, great pike numbers, decent walleye fishery, decent perch numbers. Crappies are still there, but you know they're they're rebounding. But that really is, you know, it's got everything. Okay, so uh, things look good in the southeast. Yep, overall it should be a, a great year with the with the new water that we have. We're going to have some newly flooded habitat, which should translate into some productivity and hopefully continue the, the, the you know through the next few years. A lot of great information, BJ. Thank you. Thank you.